life is beautiful life is magical life is intoxicating because it is happening in a realm that is even more beautiful even more intoxicating and even more magical death introduces you to that realm if you love life then there is no reason to hate death if you have experienced something beautiful in life if you have seen some magic some mystery some connection know that death will amplify all this provided you are ready for the experience you're not clinging to the mind you're not clinging to the shore this is an art it's not about falling in love with dying it is not about hating life now this is a very sensitive and very important area that has to be understood very clearly a small misstep here you will end up glorifying something you should not glorify it is not death and dying that is being glorified it is an opportunity to put an end to dreaming now that has to be glorified because what are we tormented by day in and day out what is it that we want liberation from we want to be able to experience a moment without the interference of the mind that is bliss that is joy that is contentment that is truth this very moment if you can fully sink in and settle into the moment you are going deeper into that intermediary space which is the bardo and even before death comes to you you can go and meet it in fact you should have met death long before it's time for it to meet you only then you will be ready death is an extraordinarily difficult and painful stranger to deal with but once you become familiar with death he is the most magnificent of friends it is the most loving most compassionate of all entities of life the difference is really familiarity as a stranger you simply cannot deal with death you will not even know what to do with it you will not even know how to approach it because it comes like a whirlwind wanting to uproot everything delicate beautiful that you have built throughout your life it does not listen to you you can cry in anguish it does not care because it does not see you it is going along its course and you happen to be there it's pointless to scream and cry and ask death to have mercy on you this is our religious narrative in praying to god in asking for things quite literally we are talking to this invisible voice that is at the edge of life at the edge of everything known god is an absolute unknown nobody knows what god is who god is what are his habits what are his likes and dislikes is he a man or a woman is he a donkey or a monkey nobody knows it's basically a conversation with death be nice be kind take me to a nicer place don't put me through endless suffering don't put me through endless torture 
just somehow guide me to a better place. You're not having this conversation with life. You're having this conversation with the death. You don't want to call it death. You simply personify death as a force, as an all-knowing, all-powerful entity that can interfere with your life. That this is where the problem is. As long as you have not become familiar with death, which is only possible while you're alive, if you have not been contemplating on death, if you have not picked up some practices, some habits that will help you to know who this death is, as a stranger, you cannot see death and death will not see you. You will have absolutely no control over how you die, what you hold on to, what this transition will be like. Will it be painful? Will it be torturous? Will it be pleasant? And of all the innumerable, infinite, different islands of life, you can be thrown on any of them. Because once you enter the realm of your mind without the support of your body, the only thing that can guide it is silence and stillness. Because all other skills perish with the body. If you were a great piano player, and if that was your life, What would you use it for at the moment of death? Even if you say, all right, I don't know mindfulness. I don't know meditation, but at least I'll play my piano while passing through this realm. And wherever I go, at least I'm going to hold on to this skill so that at least parts of my life will be melodious. I will do something that I've always enjoyed doing. But you are leaving your body. And what is body? It is the collection of all your actions. Your body is the memory store of everything you've ever done. It is your body that knows how to play the piano, not your mind. Your mind knows nothing. It's your fingers, it's muscle memory. Every single moment of your practice has become a part of your body. Actions store their memory in the body, not in the mind. Death is when you are leaving your body behind. You are entering a totally different realm. How can you take this skill? You cannot. And if you cannot take your skill of playing the piano, you cannot take anything that you have learned as a part of protecting your body, as a part of enjoyment and entertainment for the body, all your love, all your compassion, anything and everything you have done as an action, which the body remembers, which you remember as, this is me, this is my life, is pointless. Only that part of you that is not the body, that is not the mind, that familiarity you have developed, that familiarity you have cultivated with parts of you that have nothing to do with the body and the mind, now that is your raft. In the turbulent seas of this transitionary pre period, what determines whether you would be lost in the high seas of life 
or you would be given some kind of a raft to hold on to depends on this. Do you understand what this raft is? What is this entity that can actually help you through the transition? Not only through the transition, it will always be there. Not for this life, not for the next life. As long as you want it, you can always come back to this. Because death is neither the beginning nor the end. It's just a transition. It will happen again and again. As long as your life may seem to be, on the scale of eternity, it is nothing. Eternity can accommodate this dreaming very easily, again and again and again. What is that raft? It is the raft of silence, the raft of isness, the raft of stillness, the raft of being. Can you exist? As pure aliveness, can you be without wanting to become? Can you connect with that part of you that has nothing to do with the mind and the body? You are all three. You are the mind, you are the body, and you are that something more. That something more is encounter with death. That unknown dimension of life that hides all the secrets, that is the source of all things, is death itself. Every time you sit in meditation, every time you exercise your choice to be mindful, to be in the present moment, you're having a conversation with death. When you have a conversation with silence, it has to be a conversation with death because life knows nothing about silence. Life only knows noise, chaos, conversations, stories, ideas, imaginations. That is life. At least life as we know it. When you are experiencing a moment of silence, you are closest to death. Death that is fully alive, fully conscious, glorious in its non-doing. A habit that has made it easier for you to be with this death, be with this moment of silence and stillness, will become your transition. It becomes a way of connecting with parts of life that you do not understand, parts of life that you do not see.